Hi, my name is Ashley Thompson, and I am a professor in the Department of History, Art, and Archaeology here at SOAS. I work on Southeast Asian art, all sorts of things in Southeast Asian art, including questions of uh, what an icon is, questions of gender and art, um, all sorts of fun and interesting things. But I'm not here today to talk about what I do. I'm here to talk about what our department does and uh, what the opportunities for study on any one of our seven, I believe, MA programs uh, for you all. So let me turn on our PowerPoint and um, I will walk you through uh, the slides. And after that, I will be looking at the questions that you will have been sending over the course of the presentation and we'll have discussions in that way. So let me, let me get my slides up and share them with you here. There we go. Okay, so postgraduate studies in the history of art and archaeology. Here you are. So the first thing to say about our fantastic department is that we have the broadest range of expertise in non-Western art found anywhere. Um, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that. Uh, perhaps somebody will come back to me one day and say, no, there's this other place. But as far as I'm aware, we have the broadest range um, found in any university. Um, what is really important about uh, SOAS art history and archaeology is that we don't just do non-Western art as a token addition to a mainstream art course. We are devoted to non-Western art. I'm sure that um, many of you are aware that in most art history programs, uh, be they in the UK, be they in Europe, be they in the United States, be they in Australia, uh, be they in uh, the many countries that we that we study um, in the non-Western regions of the world um, do include components of non-Western art. However, very very few art history programs actually take that as their as their focus, actually commit themselves entirely to that, and that's really who we are. So we work on African materials, East Asian materials, near Middle Eastern materials, South Asian materials, and Southeast Asian materials. So, um, so if, you, if you want to be studying Renaissance art, it's not here. <laughs> if you want to be studying something outside of the West, the West this is what we do. Okay, so um, to, to characterize a bit what we, what we do, um, our, our general uh, learning and teaching goals within the Art History and Archaeology Department is that we provide disciplinary training in art history. We do not do field archaeology, but we have um, we have a few archaeologists on staff who also uh, think about archaeology and work in archaeology themselves, and that's integrated into their into the delivery of their of their modules. Okay, uh, we provide historical depth. I think that's something that's been very important in the history of our program here at SOAS is that we, um, while we, a number of our staff members, and indeed all of the staff members in one way or another, are attentive to questions of modern and contemporary art, we, we have a, a very deep historical training embedded into um, the, the, the entirety of the program. And I think that's really quite important for understanding the kind of difference that SOAS offers. So even if you will be doing modern and contemporary art, you have access to, um, to historical depth within the room. We have regional breadth. Uh, if you uh, go back to my first slide, you can see the different regions that we work on. Um, and we have theoretical rigor. This is very important to us to not just be developing students who are, who are able to, um, to, shall we say, expound knowledge on a particular region, but who are able to think critically. That too is embedded into all of our modules developing processes, supporting processes of critical thinking in our student body. Okay, so let me uh, let me keep going here to give you an idea. So for the, the following slides here, um, I've listed the, uh, first of all, I've listed uh, different areas. Okay, so we'll start with, we'll start with Africa, and I've listed a number of modules, um, a sampling of modules out of each of these areas. Now, what I should say here is that this will give you an idea of the range of 
the range of modules, that is the range of, um, of courses, as you like, uh, as class of class that we deliver, the, the topics that we teach on. In any given year, many of these will be offered. Some of them will not be offered. Um, that has to do with, uh, with student demand. That has to do with uh, uh, the specialists being on sabbatical or being here. That has to do with us alternating our deliveries so that we're not delivering the same thing every year, such that we can be constantly integrating our current research into our delivery, this sort of thing. But I'm, I've put this out here for you to get a sense, to, to enable you all to get a sense of um, really the, the kinds of topics we, we treat and the diversity of the work that we do here. So Modern and Contemporary Arts in Africa, Museums, Anthropology, and the Arts of Asia and Africa, Photography, and the Image in Africa. Let's move, uh, excuse me, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, East Asia, we have a wide East Asia offering. Uh, this is indeed one of our most popular degrees. I'll get on to the degree programs themselves a bit later, but we have a lot of students who are, who are working in East Asia. So Art and Archaeology of the Silk Road, Visual Arts of Dynastic China, Arts of Modern and Contemporary China, Ceramics in Chinese Culture, Chinese Porcelain, Modern and Contemporary in Art, Sacred Art and Architecture, um, excuse me, Sacred Art and Architecture of Ancient Korea, Arts of Koryo and Choson Korea, Popular Practice in the Edo Period Arts, Shogunal Iconography in the Edo Period. So as you can see, China, Japan, Korea, um, we have a, a wide offering in each of those areas, in fact. Uh, next, for the Near Middle East, you see we have Arab painting, Persian painting, architectural boundaries in the body, art and architecture of the Fatimids, art and architecture of the early ends in the Bailiks, Islam in the West, Islamic archaeology, Islamic art and architecture of the Eastern Mediterranean and the Crusades, Islamic art and architecture of medieval Anatolia and the South Caucasus, visuality and Islamic art. So you can see, for example, if you take the Near and Middle East as a region there, um, if you look at those regional offerings, you can see that within that there's a wide diversity of topics and a wide diversity of approaches. So uh, there's a, a more archaeologically based approach, there's a more art historian based approach, and there's a, and there's a more theoretically oriented uh, aesthetics based approach. Okay, so each of these, of course, um, overlaps. And each of the modules would have an element of that, but you can see within the Near Middle East the, the kinds of um, the kinds of well the, the dynamism I think of, of the program. So South Asia, um, arts of the Tamil Temple, the Indian Temple, Tibetan Buddhist monuments in context, critical themes in Tibetan art, imagining Buddha head in, in South Asia, interpreting visual expressions of the mandala. On to Southeast Asia. Um, Southeast Asia, we have Buddhist and Hindu art of the Maritime Silk Route, engendering Southeast Asia, aesthetics and politics of sexual difference, issues in contemporary Southeast Asian art, monuments and sculpture of Angkor, the figure of the Buddha, theory, practice, and the making of Buddhist art history, Southeast Asia's art histories. So again, a wide range in Southeast Asia. And I'll take the opportunity to tell you here about a particular program we have for Southeast Asian art. Um, which is really quite wonderful. We're very lucky here at SOAS to, to have funding, to bespoke funding to support students and staff uh, undertaking study and research in the study of the Hindu Buddhist art of ancient and pre-modern Southeast Asia. So we have very, um, very uh, extensive uh, opportunities for students who are focusing in one way or another um, on these materials uh, from the Southeast Asian region. So let me, and that is called the Southeast Asian Art Academic Program, as you see on the slide. Moving on now to, um, to theory and trans-regional courses. So we also have courses which are not, uh, which are not organized uh, according to one discrete region, but instead cross our regions, as we call them, and are more theoretically oriented. So the first one that you have on your screen here is Theory and Method in Art History. This is a module uh, which is offered in order to enable students um, who wish to really develop their, their, their knowledge, their background, and their, their skills in methods and theories in art history. Um, this is not a required module, but we, it's, it's one we're introducing in the coming year, and it's one that we expect the bulk of our students will be, uh, will be taking. Uh, contemporary art and the global. 
diaspora context and visual culture, and representing conflict. So all of these are, are modules which are which are thinking about the discipline of art history and are thinking transregionally, okay? And thinking specifically about the discipline of art history as it concerns uh, the non-Western regions, okay? Museum studies, uh, collecting and curating Buddhist art in the museum, curating museums, anthropology, and the arts of Asia. So again, I'll be talking about the specific uh, degree programs in a moment, but this is one area. So we have the regions, we have the theory and the trans, the trans regional uh, uh, classes, and then we also have uh, a grouping of classes within museum studies. Um, so let me, let me go on. So here are our MA degree programs. Um, we have the MA in History of Art and Archaeology. This is perhaps our most popular MA, MA program. It is the broadest, and it allows for the largest selection of options. Uh, the MA in Contemporary Art and Art Theory of Asia and Africa. Um, again, uh, Contemporary Art in a very popular um, MA program at the moment as well. MA in the History of Art and Archaeology of East Asia. Uh, that is a one-year degree program. Uh, students have the option of, uh, of applying for the MA in the History of Art and Archaeology of East Asia with intensive language. That's a two-year program, and as you can see, you accompany your study of art history and archaeology with study of uh, one select uh, East Asian language uh, in an intensive manner. Uh, the MA in the History of Art and Architecture of the Islamic Middle, Middle East is, again, a one-year program, and it also includes the option of doing it um, along with the Intensive Language program as well for a two-year program. The MA in Museums, Heritage, and Material Culture Studies, uh, this is a degree program which is offered in conjunction with the Department of Anthropology. And then the MA in the Religious Arts of Asia, and the MA in Critical Media and Cultural Studies. Now, the classes that I just went through uh, gave you uh, the different classes that I just went through in the previous slides gave you a sense of the different uh, the different options available in the bulk of those MAs. What I haven't walked you through is the specific modules uh, that are designed for that last MA on your screen there, the MA in Critical Media and Cultural Studies. So for that, I would encourage you to go onto the website, uh, search SOAS, Critical Media and Cultural Studies, to get a sense of what goes on there because it's it's um, it's within the it's within the department, but it has a, a different status. It doesn't share in the same way with all of the other modules, um, with all of the other modules available. Not in not in exactly the same way. Okay. So uh, let me bring you now. Yes, so it's, it's also very important to know that when you're in the Department of History of Art and Archaeology at SOAS, uh, of course you find yourself within, um, uh, within a department. We, we typically have uh, over 100 MA students uh, in a given year who are doing, who are doing full time, doing part time uh, amongst those that range of MA programs. Um, you are, of course, uh, in a department which is within the larger institution of us, but perhaps more importantly to your experience, you are also within the School of Arts. This, the School of Arts is a very dynamic, multidisciplinary school that includes four different uh, units. So you have the History of Art and Archaeology, you have Music, you have the Center for English Studies, and the Center for Media and Film Studies. So um, it's very, uh, there's uh, an intellectual life which is shared amongst staff and students. Uh, through uh, joint course offerings, but also through uh, social activities and uh, and through events, uh, extracurricular uh, research events, which are held within the School of Arts. So um, it's a it's a very vibrant arts community in that way, and um, we certainly um, encourage students to profit from the diversity of expertise among staff, but also among students who come to us. Um, we have a body of extraordinarily talented students. And often, I think we think and we see that the students learn as much from each other as they do uh, in the classroom and from us. So uh, learn from each other in the classroom as well, but they learn from each other outside the classroom within the larger research environment and within the social environment, which grows out of that. Okay. So uh, the MA program structure, uh, 
For the details, again, I would encourage you to really study the website to get a sense of um, the structure of each individual MA. What I can tell you here is that what, um, what the structure is designed to allow you to do is to is to develop the area of expertise that you have chosen to develop, be it in Islamic art, be it in East Asian art, be it in Southeast Asian art, uh, be it in theoretical approaches to art history uh, outside, of, outside of the West, uh, to really develop that kind of expertise at the same time that you're able to benefit from the, the absolutely amazing array of modules that are available across the institution as a whole, okay? So while we, um, while we require you to take certain, um, depending on the degree, we require you, of course, to take certain modules within your degree, such that when you when you come out with that degree, you are um, you are equipped you are equipped uh, in that area of study. Um, but we also encourage you to branch out to to try a language class, for example. Um, we really encourage students to. SOAS is, of course, one of the institutions, one of the remaining institutions that offers a um, an array of of possibilities of study in uh, rare and endangered languages, in fact, and um, uh, or languages that um, are perhaps not endangered, but are endangered in their study outside of their uh, of particular their their particular nation state context. So um, we do we do offer this offer this study, and we encourage our students um, in art history to develop that kind of linguistic skill, which will enable them to be working with archival material to it enable you to be working um, in the future with uh, with resource material that comes out of the regions themselves, this sort of thing. But also perhaps to take, depending on your orientation, to take a class in anthropology or to take a class in politics. It, it depends on your your interests, it depends on your degree program, but this is this is available and it's it's very exciting, I think, for us to be able to to make that um, make that available to students. So all programs include options from the School of Arts and from the Greater SOAS world. Full-time students will study four modules worth 15 credits each per term. That's during term one and during term two. Students can choose to study up to one and a half modules outside of the history of art and archaeology department. And again, this is just a fantastic opportunity to study a language or take, take options in any of the departments. Here I've listed anthropology, history, literature, religions and philosophies, politics, et cetera, et cetera. There's so much out there. Um, term three for the full year students is devoted to, um, to the dissertation, the required dissertation of 10,000 words, uh, which makes for 60 credits. And this, is, um, this allows us to really develop the research component, the independent research uh, component of the degree. So while you will have done significant amount of classwork over the first two terms, in term two, you begin to formulate a dissertation project. By the end of term two, you will have had a first meeting with your, uh, with your dissertation supervisor. And then in term three, you're meeting uh, further with your dissertation supervisor, and you're really beginning to develop a, a very, um, a very individual, independent research project that you submit uh, in September at the uh, the end of your full academic year. Okay, uh, so extracurricular opportunities. Uh, we have the we have the the wonderful chance of being in London. This of course allows us to uh, to bring our students on guided visits um, and uh, to enable our students to undertake research in London museums and galleries. Um, this includes of course our own Brunet Gallery, which is in the building um, at it's a part of SOAS and it's within the building uh, within which uh, we work. Uh, we have regular research talks by invited speakers organized through the department, organized through study centers, the Southeast Asian Study Center, uh, et cetera. Um, and of course, through the institutes, the South Asia Institute, the China Institute, these are, um, these are regionally focused research centers that really contribute to boosting our research environment um, for students and staff. We also have field trips further afield. Um, I, for one, am, am, um, am very lucky to be able to, to accompany students on an annual study trip along with a number of other colleagues uh, in the Art and Archaeology Department to collections and research archives of Southeast Asian Hindu Buddhist art in Paris and in the Netherlands. We go to Paris, we go to Amsterdam, and we go to Leiden. 
We take students to the museums, which house the major, major collections of Southeast Asian art in those, um, in those locales. And we also take them, and this is quite important as a part of the training, we take them to research archives where you can begin to get your hands dirty, begin to understand uh, what are the archives that underpin the museum collections? What are the archives that underpin the study of archaeology um, uh, of, um, of Southeast Asia, the study of our history of Southeast Asia in Europe? So while we're able to do that in London as part of our degree programs, we have an extracurricular trip that brings the students who have been focusing on Southeast Asia in particular um, off to the Netherlands and Paris to really develop that expertise and that, that, that understanding of what's out there and how to access it. Uh, from the MA moment. Um, this inspires certain students to continue uh, into the PhD program. It inspires other students to actually integrate this kind of archival work into their, um, into their MA dissertations as well, um, or future research projects post MA. Uh, we're able to do that particular trip because of uh, the bespoke funding from the SOAS Southeast Asian Art Academic Program. Um, and we, uh, we, so we, we, we profit from London and we profit from, um, from our placement here in Europe to really give the students um, as much as we possibly can. So resources. Um, the SOAS Library is a national research library with special collections. We are extraordinarily privileged here at SOAS uh, to have these collections at our fingertips, literally at our fingertips. Um, uh, I can't emphasize enough the, um, the, the, the wealth of these collections um, and the, um, yeah, the privilege that both staff and students have of being able to work with uh, non-Western materials um, as well as materials uh, written in, uh, in European languages that support the study of non-Western uh, art and archaeology. Um, within a national research library. That's, you know, I, I, I can't emphasize that enough. We have the Senate House Library, which is effectively a part of SOAS. It's, it's not only a SOAS library, um, it, it, but it complements uh, our library in very important ways. And it's here, as you, as you will, on our, on our campus by Russell Square. Um, the British Library, what, what can you say? <laughs> Perhaps the best library in the world, uh, which is a 10 minute walk away. Um, students uh, can access that uh, as and when they like. So as teaching collections, we have objects uh, which are used particularly in the museum studies courses, uh, but not exclusively. Uh, also, for example, within a lot of the work on Chinese ceramics, uh, we, we uh, our, our staff members work uh, with their students uh, with the, the objects that are in the SOAS teaching collections. And as I mentioned earlier, we have um, our own galleries, the Brunei Gallery, the Percival David Foundation of Chinese Art, the Lady David Gallery, which is situated in the doctoral school, again, here in our Russell Square site. So um, careers, uh, where do our students go? They, they go all over the place. They have exciting, exciting careers, exciting futures. Um, I've just listed um, listed uh, some of the many, many areas where um, where our students head off. Um, it's a, it's a very wide world of arts and culture. So we have a lot of people going into museums and galleries, as you could imagine, uh, working in curation, working in education, working also in development. We have students who are doing work in international aid, uh, humanitarian kinds of areas, development kinds of areas, cultural and creative industries, government sector arts, culture development, uh, NGOs, art criticism, journalism, publishing, auction houses and art dealers, art archives, some students going into academia, um, and on and on and on. This gives you some sense of it. The world, the world is yours in many ways um, with, with the degree. So um, to give you a, a sense of um, destinations, uh, here's a website where you can get, get a sense of who's gone where, um, a sampling at least of that. Um, so people who are working in fashion, uh, people who are working a freelance journalist, a freelance media analyst, a gallery assistant, uh, project managers, museum volunteers, project coordinators, public relations assistants. Um, these are some of the, the recent positions that um, students who have left us um, have landed. Uh, here's a, a, a sampling of, of employers, okay? Um, from Christie's to, to different, uh, from the Nanjing Museum, 
uh, again, go to the website here of Art Graduate Destinations to just, just get a sense of what, what people are doing. Um, and of course, if you're able to come to an open day, you can uh, talk to students uh, and talk to staff uh, what they're doing here at SOAS, but also what they, um, how we got to where we got, uh, where we are, what we've done with our careers. Um, many of us um, have had had multiple careers or have had very diverse careers that are part and parcel of our academic personas at the moment. Um, and we link our students into those networks from where, where we come from. Um, and many of our students also come to us uh, in the middle of the a professional, the development of a professional career, or some go on um, to, to develop them and come back and talk to our students, et cetera. So, so do come onto campus to an open day if ever you can uh, to get a sense of, more of a sense of that, okay? So that's what I have to say now. I wanted to open it up to questions and um, yes, to, to just um, yeah, just talk with you all. If there are specific things you'd like to you'd like to know, then send those questions my way. I can see my screen here. If anybody has a question, send it my way, and uh, yeah, and we'll go from there. Okay, so this is Selena. Ah, who was wondering what the difference is between undertaking the part time and the full time MA program? Okay. So thank you for that question, Selena. Um, so the MA is comprised of 120 credits, OK? I believe I have a slide here. Let me see. Um, perhaps I skipped over that slide. The MA is composed of 120 credits. If you're doing it uh, over the course of one year, then you take 60 credits uh, in one term, 60 credits in another term. Let me just bring you back. Um, to this slide, bring me back to the slide. If you are taking it over two years, and you have, of course, your MA dissertation, if you're taking it over two years, then you need to divide, um, you, can, you can balance it out as you wish, really. Um, most students end up doing 30 and 30, and then 30 and 30 in the second year and their dissertation in the second year. Now, um, you can also do it over three years, and that obviously enables the, mo the most flexibility so that you can balance. If, for example, in one of the terms you have a heavy workload, many people go part-time because they're working at the same time. You have a heavy workload or you have a carer load, whatever it might be, uh, then uh, you're able to take uh, a smaller number of credits in one term and a larger number of credits in a term. Uh, we, of course, advise you uh, to balance it out as, as well as possible, but we are very flexible in relationship to your own schedules. And that's really what the part-time uh, degree program is, is, is for. It's to allow you to work the study program into your personal schedule. So, um, and when you're doing it in three years, you don't have to put the dissertation into the last year, but most people do, and it's advisable uh, because, of course, then you will have done your coursework before you move into the dissertation. So um, the difference is that, I think. Um, let's see, what else can I say about the part-time? I think it also, so many people do the part-time because of other obligations, other responsibilities. Often those are financial. Um, but some people do the part-time also because it suits better their um, it suits better their career development if they're in the middle of a busy, exciting career and they don't want to drop out of that career because uh, they'll they'll fall out and they might not be able to get back into the same position. This sort of thing. So they so they'll cut down on their work and add this in. Um, some people do it also because of their particular study habits, their particular study skills, study habits, and desires. Uh, doing the MA part time depending on the rest of your schedule, can allow you to have more time to devote to each module, have more time to devote to the reading, really try to um, commit yourself to going through the weekly reading as, um, as thoroughly as possible, to take advantage of the, of the museum visits, of the archival visits that are integrated in, into your degree, um, and to just give yourself the time to digest the material 
and for your own research to mature. So some people, um, for some people that suits. And this is also um, a good reason to look at a part-time degree. So feel free to follow up with that question if you, if you have more. If I didn't quite answer what you're getting at, yeah. Okay, so now we have a, a question from Panapat. Um, who would like to know that if he graduated with a bachelor's degree in fashion design, can he or she uh, study the MA in art history and archaeology? So, Ponapad, thank you for that for that question. Uh, my the short answer is yes, you can. Uh, what we look at when people apply to the MA in art history and archaeology is uh, the first one of the first things we look at is, of course, your BA degree. We do not require that you have a BA degree in art history. We require that you have a BA degree in art history and or a related field. OK, um, fashion design. Uh, it depends exactly on your program. It depends on where you study, what's what what is integrated in that program and, of course, how well you did on that program as to whether or not um, you would be admitted. But in principle, a degree such as fashion design is one we would consider uh, as a as a possible stepping stone into the MA in art history and archaeology. So I would say certainly uh, try it out. You know, put in an application um, if you're coming from that area. Um, I think that's also part of the part of the the richness of our student body is that there's not. There's not a SOAS standard. There's not there's not a, a standard SOAS student of art and archaeology. We have students with such diverse backgrounds from so many different countries, from so many different disciplines, from so many different different um, different perspectives, and they come together in the classroom, and everybody has something to give. And it's the job of the teacher then is to get that dynamic going, to allow people to bring their different kinds of knowledge, their different backgrounds to the table, and really work together. Um, so some students will come in with, uh, with very uh, standard uh, art historical degrees. They will come in with, with, with certain skills. Um, some people will come in with, with, a, with a history degree. Some people will come in with a background in curating um, and a, a maths degree, but 10 years in the curating profession. Uh, this kind of thing. So we really bring people together to share their share their kinds of expertise, share their backgrounds, and build together their knowledge. Okay. So please don't shy away if you think, oh, I'm not quite right. Nobody's nobody's right. <laughs> um, what we what we look to do is to is to create a diverse and dynamic student body. Um, I should also say that we do uh, another wonderful component of SOAS are some um, postgraduate diploma programs that enable students who aren't quite ready to enter the MA in art and archaeology. Um, they, need, they need something. They need, some, they, need, they need more background in the humanities, for example, more background in the arts, or more background specifically in they want to acquire more background in Asian art or in African art, something of this order. We can we can send students. We can recommend that students first do um, first do a diploma. We have a diploma in Asian arts, and we have a, another postgraduate diploma. Those are stepping stones again for entering into the MA. So um, often we recommend that students do that if they aren't quite at the level to enter the MA. Okay. So now I see I have a question from Jim. Um, asking if there are opportunities to further interest in the modern Southeast Asian art, particularly Singapore, Malaysia, and SOAS. Who may I talk to to know more? Um, so, Jim, thank you very much for that question. Um, we are, yes, absolutely, a place where you can do that. Um, as I was saying earlier, we have a, we have a very, um, a very well-supported program in, uh, in Southeast Asian Hindu Buddhist art of the ancient and pre-modern periods. Um, this is where I think the historical depth is also very important for students who are working in um, modern and contemporary art. Um, we have a specialist on staff of Southeast Asian modern and contemporary art. Um, so uh, we all work together. I work on the earlier materials, although I, I have a, um, a, an interest myself. 
uh, in uh, modern and contemporary materials as well. My, my, my teaching and my research is oriented towards the, towards the, uh, the older materials. Uh, but my Southeast Asia modern and contemporary colleague and I work quite closely together along with another, uh, a wider range of colleagues um, across the regions, but also inside South and Southeast Asia uh, to, shall we say, uh, animate a program in Southeast Asian art uh, broadly, broadly taken. So uh, I can say, for example, that this weekend, a number of our students and alumni are running a program called Southeast Asia Currents, um, which is a platform for modern, contemporary, and Southeast uh, modern and contemporary Southeast Asian art here in London. And they're running uh, three days of events, uh, screening films, uh, artist talks, installations, all sorts of things. Um, it's not something which grew solely out of SOAS. It's because there are these great people doing things around London. They've also taken degree programs at SOAS. They're, they're, they continue to work with SOAS. Some of them are in a, a class that I teach on, on Buddhist art at the moment. Um, and they're running this program this weekend. So it's a very, very lively environment for, um, for folks working on contemporary um, and in Southeast Asian art. Uh, Singapore and Malaysia, yes, uh, absolutely. Um, we, I should also say that in addition to the students, the alumni, the, my colleagues, um, we have um, many, many students who are actually from Singapore uh, or from Malaysia who are, um, who are part of our programs. And so there's that, uh, that regional expertise that comes um, from the student body directly as well in that way. So um, yes, who should you talk to more? You could talk to myself. Uh, you can email me. You can also um, email my colleague, Pamela Corey. She's on research leave at the moment, but um, we, can, we can get a conversation going. OK, her name is Pamela Corey, C-O-R-E-Y. OK, so Jody, is there any way to submit the dissertation earlier than the end of the course in September? Yes, yes, of course. Um, Bravo to you if you're able to do it before the deadline. Um, and yes, of course, you can do that. Um, some students, so the, the, um, the supervisory uh, component of the dissertation starts, as, as I was saying early, in term two. So if you're doing it um, in a one-year program, it starts in term two. It continues into term three. And generally, the supervisory situation uh, comes to an end in July, shall I say. That's a generalization, but something of that order. And the students, from that moment on, work independently. Now, some students um, wish to write their dissertations elsewhere than in London. Um, that can have to do with their research degree. It can have to do with their personal lives. Um, that, is, that is possible. Um, we need you to be here in London. You need to be here in London to be having your supervisions early on. But if at some point when the supervisions are over, you've been able to, um, to do your face-to-face -face supervisions um, up to a certain point and you feel confident and you're super confident that you can be writing elsewhere, then you're certainly able to do that. In that kind of situation, people might be submitting them early, um, but they might also go off somewhere else to, uh, to complete the writing process. OK, so I'm reading now from uh, that was Jody who asked that question. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. Uh, now I'm reading from Selena. Um, so Selena is thanking me. Let me see if there's another question um, in here. Um, so she so Selena is also wondering how the credits relate to how many days you would be in class per week. Right. So generally a 15 credit module. Um, so a 15 credit module is, um, so most modules are 15 credits. So let's say you're doing a full-time degree. Uh, in, in a given term, term one or term two, you would be taking four 15 credit modules. Generally, a 15 credit module will meet for two hours per week. Okay. Now, there may be, for example, the theory and methods course, that the theory and methods module that we'll be offering as of next year. That will be meeting for two hours uh, in a lecture theater, and then there will be a one-hour tutorial in smaller groups. Okay, so uh, that's 
So that's that's an exception. Generally, you can think 15 credits means two hours. So you can do the math there. If you're taking four 15 credit modules, they're two hours. You'll be you'll be having eight hours of classroom time. So this is also something that people try to work out with their part time scheduling. Um, they try. You can choose your classes for your topics, but some people by necessity will have to also choose classes according to their own availability vis-a-vis -vis their work schedules. So um, Yes, so that's that's how it works. So classes are taught from Monday to Friday, and um, yes, the other another um, advantage, shall I say, of doing uh, the degree part time is that you can say, oh, I really want to do this course, this module, but the 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 tutor for that module is going to be on sabbatical in term two of this year when that module is taught. So I'll take another module in term two of this year while that person is on sabbatical. And then when that person's back, I'll take the module with them. OK, so you have a little bit more flexibility in deciding um, and really profiting from from the from the from the full array if you're doing it part time. OK, um, so let me see. Where are we? Catherine, Catherine. Uh, so you're interested in doing a part-time master's in the history and art and architecture of the Islamic Middle East, and you're wondering on average how many hours each week it would be if you spread it 60-60 each year, okay? Um, when you say 60-60, I'm going to take that to mean a uh, year program. Um, that's what I think you're referring to. You're doing it part-time over two years. Um, so that means you would be doing 30 credits, so two modules in one term, and then 30 credits in the second term of each year. Um, so as I was saying, your classroom time will be two hours um, times two, in a, so that would be four uh, classroom hours. And then in addition to that, you have to think about all of the time that you dedicate to reading and to writing and to writing, okay? Um, and or extra extra uh, archival work, extra museum visits that you want to do on your own, uh, that you might be doing, any any research talks that you'd be going to available here at the university. So you manage your time in that way. Um, I have a hard time estimating how much uh, time in the library people need. Uh, it really varies according to your background. It varies according to your to your um, to your approach to um, to doing the assignments. So um, I don't really, I don't, I don't myself dare venture um, the amount of time for for a particular module for a given individual. Um, but I think you can go on the basis of two hours um, for a 15 credit module, possibly three hours, and do your math from there. So I hope that's helpful enough. Um, Okay, so here's another question from Selena, who is currently undertaking a graduate certificate in the history of art and architecture, comes from a fashion design background, and wants to know if this would be a suitable course to back up a fashion design degree. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So um, to come from, to have a fashion and design background, to then go into a graduate certificate in the history of art and arch architecture, and then to go into the M MA program, yes, this is a, this is, um, I don't want to say a common a common path, but yes, having that stepping stone of a graduate certificate is very very useful to then come into into the MA. So um, um, another reason why we've developed this theory and methods course is also to enable students who have um, who are coming from a you know a slightly different background. Someone who's coming out of, for example, uh, complet if they did a, a comparative literature degree at the BA level. Um, or if they did a fine art degree rather than an art history degree, so something that is um, that is within the within the realm of related degrees, um, or even if they they way back when did a master's degree and then they had a career in an auction house um, for one reason or another, um, and then uh, we we if one is we the the theory and methods uh, course also enables students to develop the to develop the a background to really understand the methodologies in art history, okay, to develop the disciplinary background, which will enable them then to work in a specific area of specialization. So it's really designed also to um, to bring people into the discipline um, from related areas, okay. 
Um, so Jody, now Jody is asking about uh, submitting a dissertation early. Ah, because she's thinking of applying for the JET program, which is a, a program in Japan, um, uh, and to leave for Japan sept in September after finishing the MA. Uh, yes, Jody, I in fact have a student who did that. So, um, so you're not the first, and um, a student who successfully completed the program and then went on to the JET program. So, yes, um, absolutely, absolutely. But again, you know, bravo to you if you're able to to uh, to finish your dissertation early and then go immediately off to uh, to the to the to the the work in Japan. Okay, so Catherine's question has been answered. Um, Zhao Kun. Okay, yes. So, uh, hello. Is it possible to pursue a PhD in SOAS after you finished your MA program? And what should I do during my MA period? Yes. So, absolutely. Um, we do, of course, offer um, PhDs. We have um, we have a, a very vibrant PhD community, and in fact, I think the PhD community is also a very um, a very important one for many of our MA students. Um, partially because the research environment with research talks and uh, is, is also animated by the PhD students. Sometimes it's PhD students giving talks, sometimes it's PhD students responding to, um, to invited uh, speakers who are working on a particular area that they're interested in. Um, so the PhD community is a very, um, it's, it's core to our, our dynamic research environment in the school. And often PhD students can become mentors for MA students who are interested in moving on to, to PhDs. Um, so what we, we do have many PhD students who come out of our programs, so who do a BA, MA, PhD, some who do MAs and PhDs, many PhDs who come from elsewhere, of course, as well. Um, and of course, many MA students who then go on to do PhDs elsewhere as well. It depends on your area of specialization and um, where, you, where you want to be um, uh, in terms of your expertise at the end of your PhD. So um, the first thing to do is to get as strong and broad a background in your MA as you possibly can. Over the course of the MA, be thinking about where you might want to be heading with a PhD. Uh, it can be difficult, I think, to be applying for the PhD while you are doing your MA, such that you move directly into, it, into the PhD after you finish your MA. That, again, takes an, a, a very, very strong student who's able to carry the MA program while conceiving a PhD program. Um, so that there's no gap between the one and the other. It's not impossible, but it is um, it is impressive if you're able to do that. Generally, what we have for students who are completing MAs with us, who want to go on to do PhDs with us, is that they complete their MA, they cook up as they're finishing their MA dissertations, they're thinking about their PhD program, they're perhaps talking about it with different tutors, uh, but they don't begin to develop the project until um, after having submitted the MA dissertation in September. So the PhD, if you're applying for a scholarship, you might want to look to be completing your PhD project uh, towards the end of the year after you have submitted your MA dissertation, so in that December kind of time period. And, um, and then you would have a one-year gap between your MA and your PhD. Okay. So I hope that answers your answers your question, Zell. Yes. Selena. Selena is interested in textiles. Do any of the modules or themes in the MA courses relate to this? So, um, so I can speak to um, one of my classes, <laughs> um, which has brought people to look at Southeast Asian textiles, uh, Indonesian, uh, Malaysia, Island Southeast Asia textiles in the Horniman collection um, over, over the past year. Actually, we had a special session in there, and I actually have an MA student at the moment who is developing a, a historical project on textiles, working with archaeological materials that have come um, out of recent digs in, um, in Cambodia and doing comparative work with uh, the representation of textiles uh, in Cambodia, but also elsewhere in Southeast Asia on statuary. So to look at some of the very, very uh, small fragments and rare fragments that have actually come out of um, come out of archaeological work and 
trying to think about the trade networks, think about the motifs, think about the relationships that we might be able to build in terms of research to understand, uh, in her particular case, the relations, this is an MA student, the relations between um, local fabrics and imported fabrics. So this is a project that she's developing um, in some ways in response to her own work before coming to SOAS, but also in response to the sessions that we had in one of my classes. Uh, other work in textiles, um, I'm not entirely sure. I would have to ask my other colleagues who is specifically, we do, I do have one colleague who um, did a lot of work and she's a museum studies colleague and she works uh, on questions of, right now her research focus is on object restitution and she works most specifically on Chinese materials. Um, but she has a very strong and extensive background in textiles, uh, also Southeast Asian textiles, but oriented sort of across the, the across Asia. Um, and to what degree she's doing that now in her classes, I'm not entirely sure. Certainly some of these museum studies work and some of her own research is oriented towards thinking the conservation issues of textiles. So. Um, off the top of my head, that's what I can tell you, but there may be many other things that are going on um, behind those module titles that I'm not aware of. So, yeah. So, Yuling, uh, you're interested in the MA History of Art and Intensive Language Japanese program. Uh, your internet is not working so well. Okay. Um, yeah, looks like you're having a hard time. Let me just say to you, Yuling, um, I'm going to have to wrap it up. And if you're having a hard time with the internet at the moment, um, please do send me your email. If you're interested in the History of Art and Intensive Language Japanese program, I may well send you to one of my colleagues. Um, we have a Japan specialist on staff, and he can walk you through that program and talk to you about the kinds of work that he does in his own classes. Um, so his name is Timon Screech. You might want to look him up. It's S-C-R-E-E-C-H. You might want to look him up and email him directly about that particular program. But otherwise, feel free to email me and I will touch base with him on, on any questions you have on that. Okay? Great. We have to wrap it up now. So um, so I hope to, to see some of you in person sometime and, um, and to hear from you in the meantime. Okay, bye-bye.